love the truths of that video, and um, I'm not on Facebook a lot, or social media for, for that matter a lot, but I did see a post this week that said um, something like this, I'd rather go to a church with messed up people who love God than to go to a church where they hate messed up people, All right? So... Um, I, I love my CCW family, and I hope you feel that. I hope you know that. And um, I'm, I, this is one of the rare times I'm going to tell you how I'm feeling. I feel it in my fingers, but I'm going to tell you a little more. I'm tired today, and I'm going to tell you why. It's a really good thing. Um, so we, we closed on a house here in Goshen on Friday. We, we moved in yesterday, a, and we also accepted an offer on our house in Michigan yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to say this a little quieter. Um, we have to go get the piano. So it's coming. <laughs> just, just, just. I'm going to find a couple hand me that piano dudes. And um, so, but this is what I'd like to do. If you've helped us, um, this, this, I'm just, we're just going to do church differently today. And we love doing church differently. If you helped us, if you cleaned or organized or picked up boxes or would you stand if you just, if you've done something to help us i just like you to stand up and, and i want to do something for you anybody else come on come on come on i, there's a whole, there, I mean there's a whole boatload of people i mean we we actually moved in 45 minutes yesterday and then we unloaded in 45 minutes yesterday and so i'm i'm like so so i want you to keep standing i want you to keep standing because this is what i want to do i, I want to pray god's blessing over you and I just want you to receive this. And this is probably one of the best things I can do to say thank you is to just ask God to bless your life. So just keep standing. I'm going to pray for you. God, thank you so much for how you love us, how you care for us. Even if this is a person's very first time at CCW, I hope what they feel in this moment is that we love each other and that we serve each other and we try to help each other along in life. And so I pray that that's loud and clear. But I also pray for the people who have helped us. God, I am asking, I'm sure they're tired today too. And I pray that you just bless their life, bless their families. I, the time that they gave, I can't repay. I can't give somebody time back. So I am asking, Father, that you just bless them for their kindness toward us. May you reward them richly. And now I ask, Father, you go before us as we open up your word. In your name I pray. Amen. Now would you please thank them for helping us move. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I'm a lot like you, and I think you're a lot like me. And, and, um, and so today, I'm just going to let you know, today's Vision Sunday. And, and like I said, we're doing this a little differently. And you're going to hear from some staff people and some key ministry people this morning. And, and um, but, but. I think how we're alike is when I was growing up, my, my dad was born in 1927, and my dad, the World War II generation, they are the what generation? My dad would do, this is how my dad functioned, tell me what to do and I'll do it. I'm not the World War II generation. And I'm like, my dad would tell me to do stuff and I'd be like, why are we doing this again? And so, I don't know, um, I, I didn't understand a lot of things growing up. I didn't understand why I had to go to bed right after supper at 7 o'clock. But then as I think about my life, I think I do know why. Because my parents needed a break. <laughs> I remember in first grade, first grade, so I'm six years old, first grade, teacher gave us free time. So what did this one do? I grabbed my jacket, tied it around my neck, made a cape, and I'm jumping desktop to desktop as Superman. I had to stand in the corner for that. Um, so I, I think... Um, Sometimes you come to church and you're like me and you can sit there and say, why do they do that? You ever do that? You ever, ever, I mean, if, if you're not, then you're probably not really connected to church. I was like, why do they do that? So today I want to give you some of the whys and I want to give you a bit of the how. And then I want to just hear from our staff of what God has kind of put in front of their face of what's important right now that's going on. And um, I, I hope that you receive the why of why we do what we do. So he, let me start with the mission statement of CCW, if we can throw that up on the screen. This is the mission statement that we have, reaching people for Jesus Christ and helping them live out their God-given potential. Say, say it with me. Reaching people for Jesus Christ and helping them. It's pretty simple. 
We want to connect people to Jesus. And so where do we get this from? Where, where, why do we do this? I'm going to give you three scriptures that kind of gives you the why of what we do. The first scripture comes from Jesus himself. And so if Jesus says, this is the most important thing of all, you need to pay attention to this. And so this is what Jesus says. Listen, 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 listen. It's like, like a parent to a child. Listen, listen, listen. Here it is. Mark 12, 28 to 31 says, one of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate. He realized that Jesus had answered well, so he asked, of all the commandments, all the Old Testament, all the things for Moses, of all the, of all the commandments, which is the most important, Jesus? And Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, 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 listen. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. I mean, Jesus is telling us we have to love God with everything we've got. All of our minds, all of our emotions, our entire being, our, our energy, it, it all, we point it to God and we love him like that. Now, from one parent to another, this is something I pray for my kids. I, I wouldn't say perfectly daily, but almost I pray this for my children. God, may they love you a little bit more every day. You know, if my children love God a little more every day, that's going to take care of a lot of the stupid things that they're going to do later because they love God. They love God more than they love the stupid stuff. And so it helps with discernment. If you love God a little bit more, it helps you make better decisions. And so loving God and loving people, according to Jesus is the most important thing of all. So we love God because all that he has done in the past. We love God because of what he's doing right now, and we love God for what he is going to do in our lives. We, we just follow. And the people part, Jesus said that's just as important as the loving God part. This is so important. So if we're really gonna love people, I mean, some people are hard to love. Just say yes if you agree. Whew. If we're really gonna love people, then we are gonna believe we are going to pray, and we are going to work for the best of that individual without expecting anything in return. So what is it that we work for? What, what is it that we point them to? According to our mission statement, we want them to connect to Jesus. So that's what we work for. We, we, you know, sometimes people are just like sandpaper on our skin. It's like, oh, uh, uh, that one there. Oh, man. Oh, man. You're going to bed at 7 o'clock. You know, sometimes there are people in our lives, but the best thing that could happen is that they connect to Jesus Christ, and then God starts changing that person from the inside out, way better than we could ever do. So we want people to connect to Jesus. We want people to have eternal life in heaven. We don't want anyone to go to hell. God doesn't want that either. I mean, that's the reality. You have to make a choice. It's a personal decision, but we want to help people go to heaven. We want to help them connect to Jesus, and we want to help people have a better life here on this earth. And we believe, at CCW, we believe that when a person connects to Jesus and they surrender their life and they start following him, that they're going to have a better life on this planet just by following Jesus. You know, the Bible works really well when we use it, right? So that's what we want for people. We want them to live out their potential following Jesus. The second scripture, second scripture, second scripture uh, that points us to why we do what we do is the Great Commission, Matthew 20, 18 to 20. And, and Jesus again is talking. This is the last command. This is the last instruction that he's giving before he goes back to heaven. So this is what Jesus said. Jesus came and told his disciples, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So we don't do this alone. This, this portion of scripture tells us, well, we really should be reaching people for Jesus Christ and helping them live out their God-given potential. That's our mission. We do this because God wants us to. We do our mission statement because God wants us to. It doesn't say go when you have time. It doesn't say go when you feel like it. He's like, you go and you do this without prejudice to all the people on this planet. So whatever background people are coming out of or coming from, I mean, if I were to ask you, what, did, did you do this? Did you go to this church or whatever? There'd be, there'd be arms going up for all kinds of stuff. And I love that. We do this without prejudice and we share it with people because God expects us to. 
The whole baptism thing in there, just, just a little up since we're talking about stuff coming up. If you want to get baptized, please let a staff member know. We're, we're going to gear up for that pretty soon. And um, so just be thinking about that. Oh, one more scripture. One more scripture that points us to our mission statement. And it's Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. I love this portion of scripture. It says this. God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. I, I, just, I love this whole portion of scripture. I love that it tells us how to be saved. We're made right with God the Father. We gain our place in heaven simply by believing in Jesus. It, it's a gift. I, I love the, how simple this is. God's grace is a gift. And I love that this portion of scripture tells us how God feels about us after we place our faith in his son. I love the fact that God calls us, what's that word that jumps out of verse 10? What's the word? Masterpiece. God says, you are my masterpiece. I believe that some of you need to embrace that today. And you need to grab, grab on to that truth I'm not saying this, God's saying this, and he is not calling you a lesser than, he is not calling you an afterthought, he is not calling you an accident, he is not calling you garage sale junk, he is calling you his masterpiece. I love that, I love that. And lastly, according to this portion of scripture, he has created all of us who's placed our faith in Jesus brand new, and he has a good plan for us to work out, to follow. I love that. I love that, that you know, sometimes, you know, it's like, okay, we do this and this and this. And, you know, you, you have a new hire, you know, and all of a sudden it's like everything's great, great, great. You know, you're trying to win them over and you're, you're like courting them and doing all this stuff. And then the first day at work, it's like, all right, have a nice life. That's not what God does. We start our life. We start with connection with God. And then he's like, I got this plan. I'm going to give you my spirit to help you. I'm going to give you my word. I'm going to put people around you. And you're going to have a great life. I got a great plan for you. Just here you go here. Let's, let's figure this out together. I love that God does that. So that is why we believe we should be reaching people for Jesus Christ and helping them live out their God-given potential. So I want to give you our four core values very quickly. Um, so if the staff want to come up, um, that, that's cool at this time. But I'm going to walk through our four core values. This is the how we do our mission statement. And so the first one is this. It's to invite. Invite. We believe that Jesus died for all people. Amen, church? Amen. Everybody. Jesus died for everybody. And so we want to invite all people to have a relationship with him, and we want to invite them to follow. If you want to see where we get that from, one of the great scriptures that, that point us this way is Luke 19.10. You can check that out later. The second core value, the first one's invite. The second one is to connect. God did not design any of us to live all alone, to be just uh, all by ourselves. One of my favorite examples, uh, this guy went to visit... Um, somebody who left the church and he just kind of got tired and, and, um, and so they were talking about life, whatever. And, and the guy went over to, they were having a bonfire. The guy went over and he picked up um, a, a coal out of the fire and he set it on the side. And, uh, you know, it's, it's orange, you know, glowing. And then after a while they kept talking and all of a sudden it turned black and cold because it was separated from everything else. And the guy turned to him and said, I'll be in church on Sunday. Uh, we, we want people to connect and it's better when we live life in community. And so we want to see people connect to God and we want to see people connect to each other. And as our church grows larger, we want to grow smaller at the same time. Like, well, that doesn't make sense. Well, kind of. We really believe in life groups. We really believe that our small group connections are really important. And you're going to hear a whole lot more about that in the weeks to come. This is what we believe. We believe that circles are better than rows. You can come here, and we're so glad you're here at 10 o'clock on Sunday, and, and how deep do you get in relationships sitting in rows? But when you break down into a smaller group, we, we joined one of our life groups Friday night. We had a good time. We were picking on people. Um, it, it was a lot of fun, but we were kind of sitting around just talking about life and doing life together. And so we, we really believe in life groups, and so we're going to encourage you. If you want more information, please, if you don't want to wait, then Tell us. We'll, we'll get you plugged in. Um, 
Also, on, on your connect, we encourage people to connect and be involved with each other in studies, Bible studies, and also service opportunities. And you're going to hear more about that in a few minutes from, from our staff and, and people. These are opportunities that are coming up for you, and you can jump on those things. And then some of the scriptures, if you want to check them out later, where we get this from is Romans 12, 4 through 6, 2 Corinthians 13, 11, and 1 Corinthians 5, 11. You can check that out. So our third core value is to grow. There are many scriptures challenging us to grow. There's just, this is how we're supposed to live our lives. So think about this. Who wants to coast? I mean, I, don't raise your hand, but I mean, who wants to be, uh, I just want to be average. I don't know anyone who says that to me. Whatever's important to them, they want to excel in whatever that is. Think, I just want to be average. So think about this. Um, I believe everybody that I know, I believe you, wants to make a difference on this planet. At the end of their life, they would, it would be awesome if people actually lined up to thank them for something. That's how most people I know want to live. It's like, I, I, I want to know that I made a difference. I, I want to know I did something for God's kingdom. And, and so grow. Think about children very quickly. Children are born really small. You know, they're, some, I, I usually joke. I mean, somebody's like, somebody has a baby that's 13 pounds. Like, man, that's like a half grown man. I'll be shaving next week. You know, you, you make jokes about stuff like that. But, but babies are born like really small. And, and, you know, we have all of these growth charts. You know, we, we go to doctor's appointments and all of that jazz, you know. And, and so they're born really small. As long as we see progress, as long we have growth charts. We, we have this vertical blind in our house that's like sacred. I can't even touch it because all of my children's growth, my wife put it on a vertical blind. We probably stole it from some house we lived in. I don't know. I mean, so, so there's this vertical blind that I can't touch. Like, I want to use that for a sermon illustration. No, you don't touch that. No, she says, no, but anyway. We, we track our children's growth. As long as we see progress in our children, we don't freak out. How do we measure growth in adults? So when we're adults, I mean, what about our spiritual life? What, what about the following Jesus part? What, what about our, our church life? What, what, what about that? I mean, how do we measure growth? I mean, so, so think about this. So it's really going to be self-motivated. You're a grown human being. You're a big boy, big girl. I mean, so how, how do you measure growth? We want to make it easy for people to grow. And so we have different things that we offer. This is why we do Wednesday nights. This is why we do church. This is why we do life groups. We, we have Bible studies. We encourage people to go to the way, man. We are just sponsoring that like crazy. We, we want to see people grow. Some scripture, if you want to check it out later, is Luke 9, 23 and Ezekiel eleven nineteen. 19. There, there's more. The last core value is this, is reach. Th this is the we can do more when we do things together. We, we can always accomplish more when we do it together than all by ourselves. And so we want to reach. We want to reach people. We want to reach our community. We want to make a difference. We encourage people to figure out their spiritual gifts, their hearts, abilities, personality, and experiences because we want to see them get plugged in and grow and be used. We want to see, I, I love that, that people are listening and, and Linda did a great job on our announcements and, and plug us this morning, our welcome. And, and it really is true. I want to see God's kingdom go further faster. Do you? Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Do you want to see God's kingdom go further faster? Yeah. All right. I mean, that's some of the things that we're doing here. That's why we're actually having our staff up here to do Vision Sunday. This, this, this is something you get connected to. At least pray over this stuff. I mean, this is serious business. That's the kingdom and the business of God. One of our scripture references is Philippians chapter 2, 3, and 4, where that comes from. Okay, so I'm going to stop talking, all God's people said. Uh, I thought I'd give it to you. And um, we're going to start off with Laura this morning. And um, I, I did not ask them to say anything specific, only that just share what God gives you. And so that's what's going to be coming this morning is what God's put on their heart. And so I'm going to start off with Laura. Take it away. Good morning. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Laura Rowe, and I have the honor of serving as the Treasure Land Ministry Director, as well as our local outreach coordinator. So um, I did ask Dave this morning what exactly he wanted us to or talk about, and he said, whatever God lays on your heart. So during some prayer time this morning, God forgive me, I was jotting down some notes. So um, there's actually always a lot on my heart, and... I think the biggest one right now is for Treasure Land is just, I feel our teachers downstairs and myself is that we are really truly trying to live out the Great Commission. We are trying to make little disciples out of our infants through fifth graders. And um, 
One way you can help doing that is to just serve. I'm going to start asking if maybe somebody would be willing to serve just once a quarter. That's once every three months. Just so you can experience what our children are learning downstairs. Um, we just need happy, friendly, nice people who love God. And that's all our children need is for you to just pour into them the love of Jesus. We have a couple things coming up that are exciting for Treasureland, I think. Um, Fall Fest is October 27th. We'll start a little more information with that in the following weeks, but our kids always seem to love that. The paint and painting of the pumpkins, our um, tractor that hopefully won't get stuck this year. Um, and so it's just, it's always a really fun event. Uh, the chili cook-off is always a big hit. So make sure you join us for that. We do Polar Express, and that is December 18th, so it is a Wednesday evening. Make sure to mark your calendars for that. Um, we'll show Polar Express here, and hot chocolate, cookies, candy, lots of things before bedtime, so make sure you bring the kids. Um, one last thing that we're going to try, and so I ask all of you to pray over this um, for me, because this is going to be a big endeavor for me, is we are going to try to do a winter VBS, a Vacation Bible School. And because we do things a little differently around here, we are not going to do it um, during the week, every day. We are actually going to try to do it um, Sundays after service. So the children will eat lunch with us, we'll give them their program, and then um, you can come back and get them. Actually, I need a lot of hands to help with that. So um, if I tap you on your shoulder, please don't say no. Please let God direct you to helping with our um, VBS and hopefully the spring. Okay, now I'm gonna, I think I'm going over, but I have one more thing to talk about. Outreach. We did our day of serving September 1st, our day of labor, and it was wonderful. We had almost 100 people serving in our community. I told Dave, I think I only had 29 people. Well, a lot of you went out and did the hands and feet of Jesus' work and didn't tell me you were out and about, and that's wonderful. Dave said that I was wrong and we had almost 100 people, so I like when Dave tells me I'm wrong. I don't know, I don't remember saying you were wrong, but. <laughs> <clears throat> he said it in a nicer way, but pretty much it was <laughs> So, but there's just some things that we're doing um, that maybe we are not necessarily outreach partners with them, but one thing that I think could greatly impact our community is October 19th, it's a Saturday, they are doing a community build, and it's not Habitat for Humanity, it's actually Sleep and Heavenly Peace, and they have all the... Um, materials on site. I can get you guys the information, whoever wants to help, but you're building beds for children in Elkhart County who don't have beds to sleep on, who are literally sleeping on the floor. And um, like I said, you just show up there, they'll tell you what to do. I'm happy to get you more information, but um, any child that we can help put into a bed in our county, I think speaks great things. Um, one simple thing you can do is every Sunday, stay after service for a few minutes. Help set up tables and chairs for Ryan's place. Uh, they meet here now instead of every other Monday. They're now meeting here every Monday, which is a great thing. We've opened our doors to them for every single Monday. And um, they just need some help setting up tables and chairs. Tonda and Howard um, kind of lead that up. So just stick around and help them out. Uh, sorry, I have lots of things on here. I just have a heart for outreach. So I'll wrap it up two quick things. Celebrate Recovery, I'm not gonna talk about Celebrate Recovery because Ryan might get mad at me up here, but they always need meals on Tuesday nights and it's really, really easy. So um, help provide a meal for them, help show up in the kitchen to help clean up or serve. Celebrate Recovery, could you really use that kind of help? And then um, Thursday, September, I'm sorry, Thursday, November 21st, we're gonna have a ladies night out shopping event. Linda and I are kind of partnering on this but um, it is for ladies only, but it's just kind of a shopping event come. We have local vendors selling everything under the sun you can think of, but uh, we're not having a booth rental fee, and it's just, we're gonna ask them to give part of their proceeds back to um, CCW so we can purchase food for Goshen School Pantry, their food pantry. Um, if you're not aware, a lot of the children go without food during the holiday breaks here in Goshen, and so we are gonna use that money to purchase food and provide it to the children in need. I was waiting for an introduction too, like Laura got. <laughs> Sheena. Okay, fine, I'll introduce myself. Everyone, everyone knows Sheena, and everyone loves Sheena, right, Church? Yeah. Uh, okay. So, how's that? Was that okay? I'm just saying, you said, <laughs> now, Laura. Okay, so 
my name is Sheena. I oversee the student ministry here. So that is sixth grade through 12th grade. Um, I love them. They're my favorite people. They're super fun. And I have to say, I'm feeling really intimidated. Both of these ladies have notes. I have no notes, so I'm just going <laughs> to... Um, I thought we were just talking about our ministry. So, uh, yeah, I oversee sixth grade through 12th grade. Um, our main thing that we do is we meet here on Wednesday nights. And something to know is we've moved from downstairs, the youth room, where we had like eight kids crammed on a couch, which I think they love that and really miss that. Um, we moved up here. So we're up here on Wednesday nights, and we start off just in fellowship and community with a large game, and we go into, um, we always have teaching from the Bible, and then from there we go into small groups. And small groups are probably our main focus for Wednesday nights, and what that is is each, um, there's about six to eight kids that are paired up with one adult leader in their lives. So we've got seven adult leaders, sorry, six adult leaders and one amazing teen leader, and they just kind of walk with the kids. They recap what the teaching was. They go through how their weeks were. They, um, they spend time in prayer together. And then they're checking up on them throughout the month to see how they're doing and they're walking with them. The goal of these adults and my goal and the goal of our ministry is really to make disciples who make disciples. Um, something really cool about our youth group is we just want you kids, these kids, to come as they are. And that is very, very literal. We have several students who come straight from practice, and they do not smell the best, but we love them, and we're so happy that they're here. Um, so what you can do for us, I thought that's what we were doing up here, was to ask what you wanted to do for the youth group. Um, first is we could always take food and snacks. The kids love food and snacks, and they would be happy to receive those. And second, one thing that we're focusing on right now is environment. It's downstairs in the youth room was just really special. We had no room, but the room itself was special. It was warm, it was inviting, it was cozy, and it really felt like home um, to the kids, and they love that. So I think there's a little bit of that that has gotten lost in coming up here in this big space that we're actually now too small for. So we're kind of working on that, and I just want, we want the kids to walk into this room and just feel like they're home, that no matter what's going on at home, no matter what happened at school that day, their family is here, they're loved here, they're relaxed, comfortable, and, and happy. So I love help creating that environment. I was supposed to have a slide of a picture of what that would look like, but that did not happen. So I just thought it would be better to exercise your imaginations this morning. So bear with me a little bit. Um, right here, this row and this row, we would like to stay and fill with students. Um, so that means that these two rows, all the way this way, all the way this way, empty. And this side we need for really important ministry things like dodgeball. Um, we need it to be open. Then over here, same thing, gone. And we want to set up our seven um, small group tables over here for times in small group right after teaching. So how you can help with that after you bring your snacks and food for the teenagers if on Sunday um, after church, if people could just help clear both of those sides, that would be really awesome. And then I will be working on other things in the environment to bring in and make it more cozy. But if those things are cleared, then by the time Wednesday night happens, the youth group are happy to put all that stuff back. And I'm sure it'll be super neat and tidy and in perfect <laughs> rows too. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. So, so just from, from my heart to yours, uh, I, I, w when I came in and she started, you know, she had stuff set up and I'm like, I love this. I, I love what's happening. And, and so there's a couple things I just want to just say that I love. I, I love that we had two youngsters up here in the band. Um, and so, 
we're, we're going to be much more intentional um, in, in doing something where when our teenagers take over this room on Wednesday night, we, we want to actually train them and all of this equipment a little bit better and to go deeper because we, we believe that our teenagers are part of the church of today, not the future church, but they're part of this church right now. And so we want to use them. And um, we don't want them to wait till they're adults to serve. We want them to serve now. And so I love that. I love that they're plugging in and, get, and getting useful. One, one other thing I just want to request um, on Sundays, a lot of times we have people over in the corner praying. And so as we're tearing down chairs, I would just, just, be, just be respectful if somebody's praying. I mean, if I'm up there praying, I probably want a bunch of commotion so nobody notices, you know, what's happening. But just be respectful as people are praying. I, I'd appreciate that. But I, I love what's happening. And, um, you, you know, we're, we're growing and changing, and it's a cool thing. And so, uh, so I'm supposed to introduce everybody now. Okay, so, so Linda, um, Linda is part of our staff, and she does a great job with our ladies and our care ministries, and so we're looking forward to hearing what you have on your heart today. Okay, care ministry. Sometimes we need to take care of the people inside these walls so that we can um, help them get over a, a hump with their, their health. Maybe they're grieving the loss of a loved one. Um, maybe they're just having a tough time. And so if we can help them, we can strengthen them, then they can go outside of these walls and be the hands and feet of Jesus. But we sometimes get to be the hands and feet right here inside these walls, helping each other. And one of the ways to do that is through our meal ministry. And Colette, I see Colette Frenchia. Can you wave? Woo, big high five for Colette. She's one of the two women that um, heads up the meal ministry. And Danny's here. I don't see Danny. Maybe she's downstairs or maybe she's not able to be here today, but she's the other one. So these two ladies are co-leading the, the meal ministry program. We're always tweaking that. Right now we have two meal trains. Those are up on Facebook on um, the women's page as well as the care page. And I'll talk about those two pages in just a second. And um, we have two families that could really use some love and some care and some meals and would love it if we could get some people um, who would like to sign up for those. And if you don't know how to do that, see me after church and I can help you understand um, how to do that. Or maybe you're not on Facebook, and so we can just have your name and number, and when there's somebody who needs a meal, we can tap you on the shoulder, either Colette, um, probably Colette would be the one to call you and, and ask if you might be willing to provide a meal for somebody who could really benefit from that. Um, we visit people in the hospital, in rehab, sometimes at home, and um, that's, that's really such a fun part. But that's not just my job, that's our job. And so again, on that Facebook page, that care ministry page, I often post where people are, what room they are. I post an address. Love it if you would shower people with cards. Um, if, if you have 10 minutes to stop up and visit with somebody, I know they always appreciate that too. Sometimes people aren't able to have visitors, and if that's the case, I will specify that, but always we can pray for each other. Mm -hmm. And that's really what that page is for. And that page is open to anybody. So if you're on Facebook and you'd like to be part of that prayer page, let me know and I will get you connected to that. I think we have, I don't know, I should have looked, probably 125 people who are already on that page. And if you have a prayer request that you want uh, to remain private, then I will not post anything. I only put things on that care page if I have asked your permission. So never fear that if you talk to me or confide in me about something, that it's going to show up for hundreds of people to see. I'm very careful with that, and I will only post if I have asked your permission first. So that kind of um, some of the things that the care ministry is involved in. The women's ministry is super fun, and I, I sometimes what I do overlaps with what Laura does, and that's super awesome for me because that means I get to work with Laura. And if you know Laura, then you understand why that's so awesome to spend time with her. Um, but we have women's events that often overlap with ministry. We've had breakfasts and dinners where we've had speakers from area not-for-profits come in that this church has partnered with. And then that gives women here an understanding of what that not-for-profit does, how they can plug in, how they can support it, maybe prayerfully, maybe with a monetary donation, maybe with uh, actual um, volunteer time. And that's always really cool. Um, the spa the toiletry bags for spa ministry, that's a great example of a way that we can love on other people. We also tied blankets a few weeks ago, um, really cute fleece blankets that we're taking to the Elkhart County Women's Shelter and the Interfaith Hospitality Network. So that's a fun thing because we can be chit-chatty while we do that, but then we're, um, we're also able to give back to somebody. Um, we've had Bible studies, book studies, special events with speakers. We have a special women's page on Facebook as well where we can post uplifting scriptures and, and messages. Um, I love that in the morning. Sometimes Laura's got, she gets there before I do. And I think, oh, that's so cool. I wish I'd thought of that. 
But I love that, and anybody can post there. So if you have something that you would think would be uplifting or encouraging to somebody, and you're not on that Facebook page, see me, and I will make sure that you get connected, because that's really for all the women of the church. And um, I'm really sorry that we've talked so much, because this means that you guys each have about 45 seconds, so I'm sorry. <laughs> so next time, we'll let you start. But anyway, I love my job here. I love what I do. And if you have ideas for women's ministry ideas, I would love to hear that too. Several people have talked to me about Fight Club. Mike Shear and I have been trying to get together for two months to talk about some information that he would like to share with me about getting Women's Fight Club going maybe after the first of the year. And I think we're actually going to connect this coming week, so that's exciting. Um, some people have talked to me about some other ideas, but I, I would love to hear your ideas and how you'd like to plug in. You don't have to introduce me, I'll introduce myself. Thanks, Dave. Uh, my name is Chris Nall. Um, I, I'm not on staff here. I just, I'm Dominican Republic Kids Alive champion here. Um, I just have two things to talk about. One, does this church realize that how many kids that we sponsor down in the Dominican Republic? We sponsor through Kids Alive over 150 kids in the Dominican Republic. Specifically, um, in the area of Harabakoa, which is um, like super near and dear to my heart. Um, I just, there's two things I'm going to talk about. One is the kids sponsorship. It just keep doing that church. That is so amazing. There's, a pe there's people, there's a community that knows this church that's a thousand miles away. Loves this church, prays for this church. The kids know when we show up about CCW and the love. So I just, I, what I, if we're kind of asking what you guys can help with their, their ministries is if you don't sponsor a kid um, or if you only sponsor one kid, come on, I sponsor six, let's go. Um, no, I'm kidding. But sponsor a kid, ask us about them. It. It's fantastic. Uh, the other part of it that, that I'm asking or talking about is the mission trip. So we have a mission trip. We go on a mission trip every year. Usually it's February. Um, we have one coming up the 8th through the 15th. It will change your life. I, um, I went, this, will, this February will be my fourth time, fourth time in a row. When I went, I was an emotional mess. Luke can talk about it, like I cried. It just, it, it hits you hard. And then the <laughs> second one was, was you good? <laughs> yeah, we can talk more if you need to, yeah. Um, so, um, so the second time I went, I kind of knew kind of the routine. The third time this last February, um, I kind of went with that same mindset. I knew the routine. And then I met um, Josue and um, a kid at Palo Blanco, which is one of the sites that we get to go to. And he wrecked me all over again. Like, it just was an emotional, I still think and pray for him every single day. Um, I've written letters, sent pictures, like, it will, yeah, there it is, thank you. Um, that's Josue, he's a fourth grader um, at Palo Blanco. He, we just connected, and we played hard, and it just, it was so much fun. So if you've ever had that tug on your heart, that thought in your mind, that pit in your stomach about doing something larger than yourself, Stepping into, I keep looking at that verse, stepping into that on the wall for being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. It's amazing. I can't, I can't talk about it enough, and if I continue, I'll probably cry, but I, those kids will change your life. So, like I said, if you, if you sponsor a kid, thank you. Um, send a gift with us. We're going to talk more about that um, as it gets closer um, to your sponsor kid. If you don't sponsor a kid, come talk to us about that. We can get you hooked up. If you do sponsor a kid or if you just want to go and experience what it's like to be on a mission trip, um, and you don't have to sling concrete. We're in schools. You can help cut construction paper. Last year we helped with the Valentine's Day thing, coloring or uh, doing cookies and stuff like that. Um, if you're more of a manual labor guy, Luke and I built a swing set. Yeah, I said Luke and I. Built a swing set last time, right? If, he, if Luke can do it, we all can do it. <laughs> Love you, Luke. Um, 
come and, come and experience it. Come check it out. It's fun. It really is. Um, it'll change your life and it'll change your perspective. Mm. Thanks, church. Hi, I'm Ryan. Um, I'm the men's ministry leader for Celebrate Recovery. So this is going to take about 20 minutes. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Celebrate Recovery is, uh, we are the hands and feet of Jesus. Celebrate Recovery. It's, um, it's a 12-step program based on the, uh, the eight Beatitudes from uh, Jesus Christ. It's a wonderful program. It's a, um, it's a fresh start. It's a new beginning. We, and, it, and there's a stigma going around that it's just, it's just for addicts. And I'll tell you right now, only one out of three people that come in that door is an addict. We have people that codependency, anger, you know, eating disorders, anything you can think of, Celebrate Recovery. And what Celebrate Recovery has done for me, it, um, it's basically saved my life and it saved my marriage by drawing me closer to Jesus Christ. I was 2017, the only thing stopping me and my wife from getting a divorce is neither one of us were sober long enough to actually fill out the paperwork. And today, I got the, the uh, privilege of watching her go through the way this weekend, and it was just so wonderful. <laughs> Celebrate Recovery gave me a new beginning. It gave her a new beginning. It taught us how to clean up our sides of the street mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ. Um, what can you guys do to support Celebrate Recovery other than just meals? Come. Throw away that pride. Throw away that whatever it is and walk through those doors and become part of that, that uh, forever family and work on yourselves and draw closer with Christ. That's what you can do. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah, yeah, I, I want to add something. <clears throat> I, I want to add two things. So, so there's um, a display out back for a DR trip, right, out back that people can check out. So, but Celebrate Recovery, I mean, I've seen this couple. Uh, they've told me their story, and yeah, we were done, and we were out. I mean, it's almost sickening how much they're kissing each other all the time. And, and it's like, dude, it's, it, it's cool to see that it's not a show. This really did change your life. And so something else about CR is um, maybe you feel like, you haven't wrecked your life or you're on top of the world and you're the next Karen Carpenter singing that song. Um, you can come and support people. I've been here, I don't know, maybe five times in the last seven or eight weeks. And when someone says, I need a fresh start to have a bunch of people clapping for you, it's kind of a big deal. And so I think um, just the support and you might grow yourself if you come and check it out. And so it's a cool thing. All right, Brother Luke. You know, you put me up here last, and your own words are give a pastor a time limit, and well, whatever. So, <laughs> those are your words. <clears throat> so, uh, my name's Luke, and I'm the associate pastor here on staff, and uh, I, there are a lot of things that I could talk to you guys about, but the one thing that I want to put out there today is is for the men. Uh, I have seen over my four years here, I have seen the men's ministry go from, yeah, we do Fight Club, to an unbelievable brotherhood. Um, a lot of that is due to the guys who have stepped up and become leaders and that respect uh, to, to push forward and build that brotherhood. And uh, I'm extremely thankful for them. Um, the specific thing I really want to highlight to you is if you are interested in participating in that men's ministry, you want to know more, you want to learn more, there are a couple ways to do that. One, find Mike Shearer. Mike, throw you in a... That man leads the charge for us in so many ways, and we're extremely thankful for him. And then uh, second to that, if you want to get into that fellowship, there is an opportunity coming up that I don't want you to miss, and that's our fall men's retreat. Um, this is an incredible opportunity to just have fun, fellowship. You eat great, I promise you that. Um, and, and this year, we have an amazing speaker coming in to participate. And I have to give a shout out to Linda for handing us his book um, so that we could get in touch with him because this guy is going to be incredible. His name is Scott Heiberger. 
He is the outreach and jail ministry pastor at Road to Life Church over in Michigan City, and his story will blow your mind. Uh, guys, you are not going to want to miss hearing him come and speak to us about how we are more than conquerors in Christ. That is October 18th and 19th. It's uh, $20 a person. If that's really a stretch for you, please talk to me. We'll figure it out. I'd rather you be there than not be there because of 20 bucks, okay? Uh, so we're going to have a lot of fun with that October 18 and 19. That's a Friday night and a Saturday during the day. Um, so there are signups for that out at FYI. Please get your name down on that. And if you have put your name down on that, we have T-shirts that are being designed by our own Nate Bontrager. And, and I need your T-shirt size because we're going to have some really cool retreat T-shirts this year as well. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's my thing for men's ministry. And Thank you, Luke. We'll get to more stuff later. So uh, there's a couple things I'm just going to throw at you very quickly, and I'm not going to preach it. I'm just going to say there's an opportunity. Um, there, there's a couple holes that we have at church, and a lot of times burden comes out of a need that you hear about. And one of the holes that we have is we could use some more help uh, with our cleaning teams. There are some nights, man, some weeks that's just covered like you would not believe, and then there's other weeks that it gets a little bit bumpy. If you, if you want to help uh, once a month just cleaning, you can come whenever you want. Um, usually it's on a Thursday. If you want to come in the middle of the day, that's cool. Just check into FYI at, after service and let them know that um, that's something you can do. Board of Directors, uh, we are looking for one addition, and um, there's going to be an opportunity for you to nominate some people. Let me just give you the bullets real quick uh, of how important this is as we put leadership together in God's church. We're looking for an active member of Community Church of Waterford, ability to maintain confidentiality, committed to a God-honoring lifestyle, committed to the church as displayed by actively serving where needed, demonstrates responsibility with personal finances and established history of making wise decisions. And so there is a form that looks like this. You can drop it in the box and uh, we will definitely take that into consideration and pray over that. So there's one, one big thing I want to tell you this morning and, um, and then we're going to sing a song and then we're going to come together as the family and, and pray about something. Um, there's an announcement I want to make. And it concerns my brother, Luke. And um, so when I came in April and just kind of taking in, God, what do you want us to do? And, and learning and growing. And, and so talking to Luke o over this period and praying with him and encouraging him to pray, um, his job is changing here. And he's not going anywhere. He's actually getting more entrenched. And I'm really excited about this. And so I want to announce his new position this morning. And... Um, some things I've asked him is, do you believe God deserves our best? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and will you help me do things well here? And he's like, yeah, I'm all in. I'm, I'm all about that. And so this morning, um, Luke's new title is going to be Associate Pastor of Connections and Creative Arts, where he is taking in all of our receiving people, our meals that we do. Um, he's hanging on to all that kind of stuff and, and the greeting, and, but he's also in, in grabbing onto worship. And he's going to be doing uh, the music and helping us do things well as we do our music. Um, the, the creative arts part, where we believe, whether you like it or not, we believe that social media is here to stay and the communication of that. And so he's going to help us do the whole video stuff better and the way we communicate. And um, I'm really excited. I'm really excited about what he's doing. And you're going to hear more about some transitions and who's going to step up to do different things. But... Um, Luke, are you excited? It, it's, it's um, I can't wait to see what God does with this brother, and we want to encourage him. And so we're going to sing together as a church, and then after, I'm going to invite Luke just to come to the front, and then we're going to come forward and put our hands on him and pray over him, and, um, and, and we'll head out that way. So let, let's stand, and we're going to sing this morning. Thank you, staff, for helping us out this morning. Thank you, Van. Reed whispered in my ear um, a few minutes ago. We also have teenagers running the camera and the soundboard this morning. And, um, yeah. So, I, 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 for, forgive us. I know we went a little long this morning. It was a different day. Luke, I'm going to ask you to come and, and just stand in the front here. And before we surround him, um, I, I want to give you a little bit of a backstory, and I want you to be confident in your leadership. And so I don't know how long, I don't know how many conversations you and I have had. I don't know how much prayer has gone into this. 
Um, but it is really important to me that the elders all gave thumbs up. So there were many conversations there. Our board of directors, uh, many conversations there. They were all thumbs up. And so uh, this past Monday, we, we settled on what we thought God was doing. And there were times I definitely wanted to talk to this guy from me, but I'm like, I got to shut up and let God talk to him. And um, do you believe God is leading you into this? Do, do you accept um, what it is that God is bringing into your life to go forward? So um, to me, this is a day of celebration where when, when there are epiphanies from God and God reveals things and, and we get it, um, I have no idea what, God's going to do, but I'm excited about it. Are you, church? Yeah. It, it's a good thing. And so, come on, let, let's, let's surround our brother. And uh, I just want to pray over him this morning. And I know Abby's at the way, and or we'd have her up here too. Um, but this is one of the things I love to do. This is a picture that hangs in my office when you guys prayed over me um, and somebody snapped that picture. I, man, it's, I, I see it every day, and that means something that we are not doing this alone. And you guys are covering us with support and prayer. And so I just want to pray as we transition into this. Father God, Father, we love you. We can't thank you enough for all of the things that you have done, the things you are doing, and the things you are going to do. Help us to be people who are just filled with gratitude. And, and yes, Father, there's a little bit of we're not sure what, exactly what this is going to look like as Luke transitions, but we trust you. And we're following you. And just like everybody in the Bible, they're a page turn away from change in their life. And, and, and this was one of those changes in our brother Luke's life and, and Abby and the life of your church here at CCW. And we see the needs that you present to us. And then we ask you what to do. And this is an answer to one of our needs. And so I am asking, Father, that you bless Luke, that you just bless his socks off. I pray, Father, that you give him such incredible vision and how to receive people and how to energize teams that receive people. And as we look at parking lot stuff and we look at growing and expanding in the future, that you just give him God vision. I don't want good ideas. I want God ideas. And so we just pour that into my brother, Father. As he looks into music and scheduling and worship and the people, we have awesome people that are working on our teams and serving you. I pray, Father, you give him great vision for that. As he thinks about how do we grow people? How do we grow teenagers? How do we train them well? How do we do things well for you? Help him to do things well for you. And Father, as we also think about communicating and videography and the social stuff that is out there, we, we want to reach people for you, Father. So I pray that you use Luke to do that as he puts teams together to do different creative things and, and graphics and arts. And again, Father, just bless him as we go forward. And Father, we simply say this to you. We love you. Help us to follow you the best of our ability. As we see things that come at us in the future, I pray we always pause, that we don't rush into making decisions. Help us to just pause and ask you, tell us what to do. We want you to be truly our God, truly the leader of your church. Help us to be the best followers we can be. So help today be a day of great celebration as we see you meeting needs and you leading us on. Again, Father, I pray that you, you bless Pastor Luke and Abby and their entire family. Bless his ministry. Bless his focus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for coming this morning. God bless you.